Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. Daniel Knott here, as always, on my channel, and I'm happy that you're joining for today's topic, which is 15 steps to write a test case. Yes, you might think, oh my God, now he's finally talking about test cases. Nobody likes test cases. Everyone hates test cases. Nobody's doing it. It's just time consuming and so forth and so forth. Yes, you might be right. Test cases are really, really time consuming. Sometimes they're just a waste of time. It doesn't make sense to write them because they are outdated pretty soon. Maybe you're just on an, in a fast paced startup where it doesn't make any sense to write test cases because the, the product is changing too fast and too often. Yes, this might be the case. Then test cases and writing test cases might be not an option or might be not an ideas thing. You have other things we can talk about at the end of the video. So make sure to watch the video till the end where I can also give you some advice how to work around test cases in case you don't want to, you can not write test cases and so forth. However, there are industries where test cases are a requirement. So for example, the health industry, for example, or I don't know, any industry where we have some high risks, potential risks of people getting insured, we lose a lot of money or whatnot. So we have industries where writing test cases and also report test cases to authorities is a requirement. And that's why I thought, hey, let's talk about test cases today because there are many of you out there working in such industries and that's why it's important. So let's jump right into the 15 steps. First one, understand the requirements. Don't start writing your test cases if you don't understand the requirements. If you have questions, talk to the product management team, talk to the stakeholders, the business analysts, whoever, what, who, whoever was writing the requirements and ask them. Have clarity on them because it doesn't make sense to write any test case if you don't know if the requirements are correct or if the requirements are clear for you to understand or if the requirements are complete. So that's the first thing to do before, before you enter tipping the on or uh, hitting the keyboard talk to people yeah then and the second step you should identify test scenarios like really how are your users customers using the product is that feature that you're going to implement something that is mature enough or is it something that is going to likely to change what are possible uh, possible scenarios thinking about happy cases not so happy cases like error cases are there possible workarounds that you can work with in order to bypass the product or system or make it more reliable. So identify the scenarios, not from a functional point of view only, but also from a non-functional point of view, because that's also important, right? Hey, sorry for the little interruption, but since I'm talking about test cases, I'm really happy to present you the main sponsor of today's video, which is Quality Plus Test Management Plugin for Jira. With the help of Quality Plus Test Management, it's getting super easy and clean. You can plan, execute tests with minimal effort so that teams can stay focused. The plugin for Jira is super easy to install via the Atlassian Marketplace and you can just start writing your test cases right after the installation process is done. The test case editor, as you can see on the screen, offers you the right amount of features to focus on writing test cases. Right from the user story, you can start writing them. You can add the test steps, the expected results, the test data, as well as the test attachments like design. With the keyboard shortcuts, testers can write test cases super fast and easy. Once the test case has been written, it's directly linked to a user story. In the execution phase, testers can pick up the user story with the test cases assigned to perform all required testing activities. Next to the writing of the test cases, the plugin offers more test management features that you have to try out yourself after this video, of course. So make sure to check the video description down below to get a free trial access to Quality Plus for the next 30 days. And now back to the main video. Once you have this clarified, you can go ahead and define the test objectives. So what is the objective that you would like to test? Yeah. So. How, how big is the feature? Are there multiple, uh, multiple tickets that come into place? And so forth and so forth. So have clarity and identify the test object. Then, of course, write a test case title. Write it as 
short as possible, but as long as needed in order to describe what the test is actually doing. And don't do many things in one test case. Only one, one test in one test case. Don't do like, okay, do the sign up, do the login, do the checkout process in one test case. No, that's too long. Just one test case and one thing, one task at a time in a test case. Then, of course, you have to write the preconditions. Is there anything that you need to do before you can start the test? Like, do I have to generate some test data? Do I have to prepare the system? Do I need to, I don't know, open a couple of windows in your system? So everything that you need to do in terms of preconditions, write it down for the person who is going to execute a test case. Yeah? Then outline the test steps. Be as clearly as possible, as structured as possible. Do it like, okay, first thing, open the browser. Second thing, type in a URL in the address input field. Third, hit enter. Really stupid. I know it's exhausting, it's time consuming, but imagine if you are not the person executing the test case, this is likely that that's going to happen still in the industry. Then the other person who is going to execute the test case he or she must be able to do it, to perform the task without asking any question to you like, hey, Daniel, what do you mean by enter a URL? I don't know. I don't understand this. What is going to happen here, right? So really outline the test steps that are required in order to perform the task. Then, of course, include the expected results. So what is really needed or like what is the expected result not needed, but what do you expect? Like how should the system behave? What are the results that you would like to see? Clearly as possible. Then, of course, add test data. In case you have a specific user, a specific data set, a specific product that you need for the test, put it there as well so that the person can either execute a script to prepare the test data or to yeah, set up something that he or she can work with. Um, consider edge cases. In case you have edge cases that you already know put this information as well in the test case for the one who is basically executing the test case later. It will help the person to do the job much better. Organize test cases. Yes, so once you have done um, writing all your test cases, you need to find a way to structure the test cases in a test management tool. Check my videos, my videos that I've done before for test management tools on my platform, on my YouTube channel. There are a couple of great tools that you can use in order to organize your test cases to actually make them reusable for other situations too. Um, use a test case template. Yes, this is also important. Use a template in order to fasten the process of writing test cases. If you have already a clear set of structures, like I said, a title, description, steps, test data, maybe attachments, use the template, generate it once, and then use it in, in order to write your test cases. And this is also usually um, supported by tools or so the test test management tools they provide a structure uh, or a test case template can look like 12 prioritize the test cases yes once you have written them down make them in a priority order because sometimes it's important and it's always time pressure when you test the product and you have in a prioritized order it's easier for the person who's executing the tests to start from top to bottom and then you know already that the most important and most risky features are tested and covered by the test cases. Um, mark test cases for automation in case you would like to automate some of them. Don't blindly uh, go into the trap hole of, hey, let's automate all the test cases. That's not possible, that's not doable because sometimes it doesn't make sense to automate all the test cases. Rather, automate only the ones that are really important from a user's perspective, from a business perspective. Mark them for test case automation so that you can follow up on later on in time. Um, yeah, point 14, of course, maintain the test cases. It's also part of writing the test cases and organizing the test cases. Um, you have to maintain them. So if the product is changing, you have to maintain the test cases as well. That's the most important and, and exhausting part. And also why this is so not, not so be the, the most happy task in the community, because the maintenance of the test cases documentation takes a lot of time and effort. But as I said, if you are working in a regulated industry, that's part of your job. You have to maintain them. You have to keep them up to date in order to make sure that everything has been tested and also to report and to have the traceability in your project for the test cases and the products that you're going to test. 
Step 15, it's not really a test, uh, something that you can put into a specific test case, but don't overdo it with the test cases. Yes, make it the short as possible, as clear as possible, and don't overdo it because otherwise nobody, nobody, nobody will read them, nobody will like work with them. So that's important. Don't overdo it here, right? And these were the 15 steps, and I promised you some bonus things. Uh, two bonus bonus slides I brought for you today, and the first one is take a lean approach. See in which state is your product. In case you're not in a regulated environment and you can use, you can decide, hey, do I want like to um, uh, go the test case direction or not? And if you don't need to have it um, prepared in a system for some other authorities, take a lean approach. I suggest using a mind map, using a, a MyRobot, for example, or other um, collaboration tools and really easy, make some notes how you would like to test the system and make this data available to your um, product development team. Yeah, Take a lean approach here, that's important. Don't overdo it. Mind maps are really great uh, for, for writing test cases, for outlining functionality in the product, and then make some notes um, on, on this. In, in, in really simple cases, take a pen and a paper and write your test cases down there as well. And of course, use a test management tool in organi or to organize your test cases. In case you have to write test cases, you have to use a test management tool, test case management tool, however you would like it in your company to organize the test cases. If you rely on the most used test management tool in the world, which is, who knows it? Yes, it's Excel. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, don't use Excel, for example, because it's just like a long table of things and you cannot find anything. Use a system where you can basically cluster your test cases, put them in folders, put them in structure, where you can uh, mark them as executed, solved, failed, and whatnot to get a better overview because also those test management tools, they offer you reporting traceability functionality out of the box for you to not generate any reports based on some Excel files, right? Yes, and with that, we are done for today. So I would like to hear your thoughts on test cases. Let me know if you're like in the team, I hate them, I have to, or in the team, I, I don't want to, I don't need them and write more mind map uh, kind of ways. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to get a picture from the testing community, how you're doing test cases, how you handle them. It would be too, too cool to see and also to share them with the community. As always, give leave, leave a thumbs up in case you like the video. Uh, leave a subscription to support me. Spread the word about the video. Share it with your network. Um, I'm happy that you're here today and see you soon. Bye-bye.